Good morning. <laughs> God is good. And all the time. I am Pastor Stephen Fries. Welcome to the gathering. I have the well behind me. We're so glad that you are worshiping with us. You should have blue connection pads sitting in your row. If you would, wouldn't mind in signing those and just checking in with stuff. If you are brand new, we'd love to have an address or some kind of way of saying thank you to you. But we're so glad that you are worshiping. We're so glad for everybody in the very last row. Thank you for worshiping with us as well. There's a lot of stuff that's going on uh, in your weekly ringer. Okay, One of the things that I would turn your attention to is the very back page. Okay, If you'd like to be a part of that, they are selling tickets. All right, And they're doing it in between the worship services. So that makes it kind of hard for us since they're already packed up and, and stuff. But if you would come in, you can always buy them in the office, okay? Uh, so just take a note of that, all right? Come on. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. How we doing? You find a spot. If someone's sitting there, I'll kick them out. That's okay. So don't, don't worry about it. No, just, just, just. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're all here. All right. Now we can have church. That's cool. And what we want to do in church is we want to praise our God. So let's do that. Let's begin our worship to time. Let's, let's stand as you are able. Scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus.
But because the ground is equal at the foot of the cross, we can rejoice and say, my life is new. My strength is in you. My hope is in you. It's in you. Help us declare that now. This morning you'd like to share. I'd like to share this. There you go. Hey, I was sick for a week, and I say to every morning I woke up, I just want to say, God sent the flu at three. <laughs> yeah. Amen. 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 Yes. 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 It has it has been a while, but we are so you're just you're just family that's all you're just family it's all right amen amen we we have you you may have to re reintroduce yourself to several folks because things have probably changed a little bit but that's all right that's all right ford you had something no, I'm just okay i just <laughs> you should see the look on his face it was just this enticing but yes okay happy for spring yeah and the daffodils blooming yes yeah wait till tuesday yeah all right pardon me yeah yeah my brother my brother yeah we are happy about that too so yes very good very good all right well we praise god in many ways many shapes many forms uh, and you can do it in in so many different ways but one of the things that we do praise our god is by our tithes and offerings. So uh, just double check when you have uh, taken out, written on the connection pad, tear that off and drop that in the basket as well, if you would please. But let's take up God's tithes and offerings.
Psalms chapter 46, verses 8 through 10. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth.
Praise be to God. Yes. Yes. Do you have a name you want to lift up in prayer this morning? Just lift me up. Yes. Kathy and Sarah. Okay. Chip. Sloan. Holly Anderson. Wanda. Philip. Becky and Stephanie. Be Becky and Stephanie. Tom. Patreon family. Brad and David, Matthew, Grant, okay, I got Kim, David, Sylvia, John and Eric, Danny and Sandy, all right, any others? I'm going to encourage you if uh, after the worship service you'd like to put a prayer uh, card up on the prayer wall. Uh, you're more invited, you're more than welcome to, to invite her to do that. But I'd be willing to wager that there are some unspoken requests as well. So let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, there's nothing impossible with you. You hear our hearts, you hear our sounds, you hear our souls. You hear our voices, that's of course. But you also listen in our heads. There are names of people that we have lifted up. And we praise you that you know each and every one of them. We don't know whether or not they know you. But we know that you know them. They're created beings. So, Father God, we praise you this morning. We have every reason to worship you. I love that song. I will sing praise. I will sing praise. David couldn't help himself, but he just praised you. And the disciples, they couldn't help themselves. They just praised you. Father, we are the disciples of today. Help us to praise you every single day of our lives as if we are sitting on the back porch in a 40-acre field with nobody around. Just praise you. Father, in our praise, we know of your power. We know of your healing. We ask that you would heal these names that have been lifted up. We also know that in, a lot, in this world, there's a lot of healing needed. We ask for that as well. Be with Reverend Sig as he preaches in this next service. Be with me. Father, but be with our congregations that your Holy Spirit will just permeate saturate us and Father as you taught us to pray we pray now by saying our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Our scripture passage comes out of the Gospel of Mark. And as you are able, I'm going to ask that you would rise for the reading of the gospel. The word of God says this in Mark, the 14th chapter, beginning in thir verse 32. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. 
He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Will you bow your heads for a word of prayer? Almighty and gracious God, I pray that you will rescue me from me. Father, I pray that you'd pour your Holy Spirit over me, through me, around me, and with me. Father, I ask that you'd put the words in my mouth that I need to speak. But Father, all glory belongs to you. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. This is the second Sunday of Lent, and we continue our sermon series based on the book by Adam Hamilton. And there you go. There we are. Yes. And I have it in English this time, so appreciate that. Just, just the little, you know, it's just, just those little things, you know. Um, but Adam Hamilton wrote this book, said 24 hours that changed the world. And it is the 24 hours of Jesus' life here on earth, those last 24. And we left off last week, we had just finished Passover. We, we finished the Seder meal. And so now if, if we were to pick this up after the Seder meal, this would be sometime around 11 o'clock in the evening. Okay? It'd be on Thursday night. And as they finished the Last Supper, the Passover Seder, they would have done so by singing a hymn because the Passover Seder was a celebration. They would be singing hymns all throughout the night as they would be moving throughout. And they even still sing during the Passover Seder, who, who those who observe this, is they sing a hymn or a praise following that meal. It's called the Halil. It means praise. And it comes off of our word of hallelujah, okay? And we would have um, excerpts coming from Psalms 113 through 118. They wouldn't sing the entire psalm, but they would sing bits and pieces of it. Just, just listen to Psalm 118, verses 1, and then verses 22 through 29. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it to this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows, with bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. We've taken words like that and put it in praise songs, haven't we? You ever understand what the center of the Bible is? I love this. 
You know, there's 1,188 chapters in the Bible. 1,188. Divide that in two. 594 on one side, 594 on the other side. You break that down to the verse. What verse is dead center in the Bible? Psalm 118, verse 8. Psalm 118, verse 8. And that verse says, It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. Praise be to God. See, the, 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 the Psalms represent the heart and soul of the Bible. And Jesus' use of them during the last 24 hours of his life may have given him comfort and should beckon us to become even more familiar with them. He predicted that the disciples would desert him. Verse 27. To flee and protect their own lives. He knew the one who was paid and would betray him. The experience of being betrayed, deserted, and denied by his closest friends would produce great sorrows in any man. And so we see Jesus here in the garden. In this part of the 24 hours, we are in the garden. Gethsemane means wine press because there's the olive groves. They would had the place where they gathered them and then they would press them for the oil. It was directly east of the Temple Mount, known as the Golden Gate or the Beautiful Gate. This is described in Ezekiel 44 as the place where a prince would one day enter the temple courts. Go figure. John 18, verse 2, says, Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. Many would ask, well, how did Judas, of all the regions, and anywhere that the disciples could have gone with Jesus, how do you know? Because Jesus did this quite often. He went to the garden. He went to the garden to pray. He went to the garden to teach. He went to the garden to be a part and be connected with, with our God. And so Judas didn't have any problem. He knew exactly where to go. Luke twenty two thirty nine 39 says, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. So he had his first set of disciples. You, you, you stay here. And then his inner circle, John and James and Peter, you come along with me a little bit further. He told him that he was in anguish. Stay here and keep watch. Watch for what? And so our minds can kind of wonder, watch for what? Keep watch for what? What do you want us to watch for, Jesus? In case somebody comes and bothers you? Brothers and sisters, when you are in times of anguish and sorrow and hurt and pain, what do we ask our friends to do? Just be there. Just be there. Stay watch with me. Be here. It's kind of comforting. Don't have to say a word. But see, us pastors, sometimes we get in the confusion that we need to say something. Brother Oren Banks. Oren was uh, a pastor when I was serving my first charge. And he came to our staff meeting and he said, guys, I did something completely wrong. I know I did wrong. I, my gosh, I don't know what, but I don't know what I did wrong. I don't know how I, and so I go, well, what, what did happen? He said, well, I was at this funeral. I was doing the funeral, so I was there. I was standing in the back. I was, I was being there. People were, were processing by, and I was just watching. And I had so many people come up and said, oh, Brother Orrin, we're so glad that you are here. So glad that you are here. When I thought it was my time to go through the line, I got to the one son, and the son looked at me, and his adult son, and he said, Oh, Brother Oren, we're so glad that you are here and with us today. He said, I leaned in when he hugged me, and I said, God is with you today. And that son pushed me away and said, What does God have to do with this? He said, What did I do wrong? I went, oh, that's easy. You opened your mouth. 
And I wasn't trying to be joking. Because, brothers and sisters, sometimes the best ministry that we can do is just be present. And it's hard for us pastors, and I know this from personal experience, is for us to shut up. Don't look at your watch right now. <laughs> I know somebody's over here is looking at their watch. And I'm not looking that way. So they were there to keep watch, and the answer was to watch for Jesus. Jesus needed them. He needed them support for them. And he did this three times. Three times he came back and said, are you sleeping? Why are you sleeping? Well, the answer to that is easy, too. We just had the Passover meal. All right? And brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I can witness to the fact that at lunchtime, I'm going to eat something, and at 3 o'clock, I'm going to be asleep. <laughs> Do I have a witness in the house? Yeah. We understand this. You put a good-sized meal in you, and you get tired. It's 11 o'clock at night. They had to make the preparations. They did all the singing. They had to travel out to the Mount of Olives. All of this was done. And now Jesus is saying, keep watch. And he's the one that's praying, and he's praying by himself. But it did it three times. Three times he asked God to remove this cup from him. Three times Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness before he even started ministry. And later we find that Jesus lay in the tomb three days. Now, there's something about threes. The number three biblically represents divine wholeness, completeness, and perfection. So what was the anguish of Jesus? <laughs> My word, Pastor. He's human as well. He knew what was going down. He knew all that was going to take place. They weren't going to just walk him to the cross and nail him. They had some business with him, and I think he knew every bit of that. But one thought was he was wrestling again with Satan. Can you imagine old smut face looking him in the eye as he's in the garden by himself and going, Are you sure you are the Son of God? If you are not, you will be throwing your life away. Surely this cannot be his will. You have a misunderstood. Are you, you sure there's not another way? You're only 33. Won't you flee now while there is time or just tell them that what they want to hear and they will let you go? Maybe it was the weight of the sins of the world. Or maybe it was Jesus' knowledge of the fate that Jerusalem was going to be in and the Jews. Because after the crucifixion, there was a chance that many would not see him as the Messiah. And they were still looking for that military conquest. And it wasn't but 30 or 40 years, whatever it was, after the crucifixion and the resurrection that all of a sudden, they had the temple being destroyed. You remember when he said that not one stone would remain on top of another? In the midst of Jesus praying, the disciples sleeping, Jesus gets agitated with them. But even in the midst of this, he shows grace. Mark fourteen thirty eight says this, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He's still showing grace. So with all the activities of the garden, what do we need to take from this? We could go dark, knowing that each of us has played the part of the sleeping disciples. We too have been called to be ready, but we weren't. Jesus sees the climax of this massive plan which began at his birth. Question, but how do we see Jesus then? How do we see Jesus? Is he, is he vulnerable? Is he human? Is he weak? Is he angry? Is he troubled? But do we see him as a model? Well, Pastor, I am not going to do what Jesus did on the cross. 
What do you mean model? Mark 14, 36 says this. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Have you ever been called by God for something outside of your comfort zone? Leading a disciple group, ministering to the prisoners, teaching a Sunday school class, or an outreach program, or simply praying at a meal. See, the model is what Jesus prayed. See, it's two parts. This is what we should pull from this, or at least a part of what we should pull from this. It's two parts. The first part is this. Everything is possible for you, O oh God. In other words, nothing is impossible with our God. Brothers and sisters, we should not ever miss that. Because no matter what we're going through, what we're traveling through, no matter what is the muck, the mire, there's nothing that is impossible with God. If he brought it to you, he'll bring you through it. Nothing is impossible with our God. So what do you have to pray? But don't ever pray, God, if you think you can do this, no. But Lord, will you do this? Because there's times, brothers and sisters, that God brings you to this storm. And I love the illustration. Lord, why in the world did you have me go through all of that storm and the meme says, because your enemies couldn't swim. See, that's the first part. The first part is everything is possible with God. But then the second part is not my will, but what you will. That should be the prayer every single day of our lives. Because God, I'm stubborn. I'm not going to do it. I'm putting my foot down, but you're calling me to do this. I don't like it. I don't like them. Don't miss that. But not what I will, but what you will. But don't we use excuses? I love the idea of praying. And one of the churches that I served, we had a lady, her husband was in the Air Force. They met overseas and got married. She was Vietnamese. And so she was part of our Sunday school class. And I said, now, if I'm doing this Sunday school class, which I have no problem doing, I will open us in prayer, but one of you is going to close us in prayer. And so as I went around the room and each week we had a different person praying, she was there and I said, I would like for you to pray. And she said, no, no, my English, not that good. And I said, I want you to pray in your own language. But you won't understand. I said, you're not praying to us. You're praying to God, and he's got this. Oh, when God calls you to open a door, oh, just wait back and watch what he's got going for you because she started off so humble, so soft, so reserved. She was, But then somewhere in the midst of that prayer, I believe she grabbed a hold of the coat of Jesus and said, now listen to me, I've got something to say. And she will like, It was one of those prayers that you hoped that your name wasn't in the prayer. <laughs> and when she got to amen, we all amen, we went, <laughs> But the best, humblest prayer I've ever heard was from my own daughter. And I've shared this story with y'all. I won't share it again, it's so cool. She said, Daddy, we're going to make spaghetti tonight. I was like, okay. 
So she had some, found some recipe. She was only like five or six, seven years old, whatever it was. And so we fixed it like the direction said. She said, Daddy, can I, I take my turn to pray? And I said, sure, you made it. You might as well pray us in. So we all sat down at the table, the kitchen, and her little prayer, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. We made the spaghetti a little bit different. Hope everybody likes it. Amen. <laughs> it was cool. I like when little kids pray because they have full knowledge of the first part. Nothing is impossible with God. And it seems like kids are so connected that the second part's just right there. Not my will, but your will. We will never, ever be called to the capacity of Jesus. You are never ever going to die for the sins of the world. Okay? That's not going to happen. It already happened once. We only needed one sacrifice. It's a done deal. But in our calling, our prayer should be just like that of Jesus. So the question I have for us as we close, what step of faith is God moving you to take? What step of faith is God calling you to? And as you're pondering that, and, and it may be something simp very, very simplistic, or it may be something in depth. It's hard. I mean, that's between you and God. But the second part, the second part, as because we know from the beginning of my sermon that Jesus did this quite often. My second part is the second question: Have you been to your garden seeking God's plan? Because if you're just thinking, I'm going to just jump in on this. Mm. Shouldn't it be that we go to our garden and have a jam session with Jesus? Will you bow your heads with me? Almighty and gracious God, we just thank you. There's two parts to this, O oh Lord. Help us to understand that there's nothing impossible with you. But Father, as we take each step of faith, may it be that not our will, but what you will. Lead us, lead us as a congregation, lead us as a church. We ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen and amen. Before I, before I turn it over to them and, and we stand and have our closing song, I keep forgetting, and I even put it up here so I wouldn't forget it. Um, we are still collecting for uh, Camp Tanico, okay? If you write a check, put in the memo, uh, something like Camp Tanico or put in... Uh, fishing and s'mores or something, something that indicates that's what it's going to. Answer your question is yes. The Amazon card thing can work. All right. It could. Um, and so as we just keep collecting, we're going to collect throughout. What I want to do is next Sunday, you will have an itemized thing of what we're looking at. Okay. So it may be one of these things that, you know what, my wife and I have talked about it, or my husband and I have talked about it. We're going to do this or we're going to do that we're going to and just let me know what and so as as much as we can check off the list and i can let them know when they order it okay so so that'll be good no 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 all the way through lent all the way through lent it, it'll end at easter oh yeah next sunday i'll have the itemized list yeah that's thank you okay i'm with you I, I'm, yeah, I was hunting in the same tree, but I thought you jumped limbs on me, so that's okay. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. All right? But we're going to still praise God, so let's stand as you are able, and let's close it off. We used to hide from the light. We made friends with the night. We 
were headed the wrong way on a want like track Going nowhere fast We got used to the dark We thought this is who we are And we figured that we were just too far gone We were wrong Cause love came running like a river We got washed in the water Then he said you're for Then you're going to eat a meal and go to sleep. I know that. Yes. <laughs> but somewhere along the line, you may be the only church somebody sees. So go in the light of Christ. Go with the knowledge that nothing is impossible with him. And let his will dominate your life. Go by his grace. Amen. Amen.